Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Watch Me Cook. Today we're making kimchi pancakes. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. So a while back I made you guys like chicken pancakes and then someone had commented how they've only had the kimchi pancakes and I was like, oh my god, have I ever made this for you guys? And when I went back and looked, I've made plenty of kimchi things except for kimchi pancakes. So why not make kimchi pancakes just for you guys? So to get started here, I am using tempa, uh, which is a large scallion basically. It's sweeter and I like to use that in my kimchi pancakes. But if you cannot find this, which you can normally find in Asian stores, but if you cannot find it for whatever reason, use two green onions instead or just one green onion, the whole thing if you like. But I'm only using the white part of the tepa instead of the whole entire thing because that's the sweeter part for me. So just chop these up and throw them right into your bowl with your flour in it because we're going to mix all this up together. Next grab yourself your fermented kimchi. Again I am cutting these into small little pieces because I like to have a bite of kimchi in every single bite of my pancake instead of you know how sometimes you get a bite and it's just the batter? Well I want the whole thing and so that's why I cut them into smaller pieces. So once I have it chopped up, I'm going to go through it and slice it again to make sure they're small enough to have in every single bite of my batter or my pancake. And if you guys can't tell by now, I am getting over a cold, so this is why I sound a little weird. But this is me now, and here we go. And no, I wasn't sick when I made this. So grab your large bowl filled with all the ingredients that we have already chopped up as well as your half a teaspoon to three quarter teaspoon at most of salt because your kimchi is already salty so you don't need more than that as well as your ice cold water. We want the ice cold water not your room temperature water because all of this helps with the frying process along with your one egg. Once you have all of your ingredients mixed in there, all you have to do is carefully start mixing everything together. If you guys notice here, I have my daughter here mixing this up, so that's why it's going kind of slow in the beginning. She is helping me. She thinks she dropped an egg. We're going through it, but kids in the kitchen help. If you get your kids in there and they're going to help you cook all this together, they're going to eat it, and that's why I have them do this. So I'm going to have her help me out first because she kept saying it wasn't my turn. And until it's my turn, <laughs> I'm going to have her go in slow motion. Alright, it's finally my turn here. And I'm just making sure that she got all the flour, the batter from the bottom and on the side. Just make sure you scrape it all up. Make sure there's nothing visible that's there that looks like a flour. That looks like flour. And just uh, mix it up. And once you're done with that, let's get your pan going. So I forgot to hit the record button on my first pancake, so here's the second one that I'm doing for you guys. So basically what you want to do is make sure you have your pan at a high setting with a tablespoon of whatever preference cooking oil that you're using. I'm just using vegetable oil myself. I am using a small ladle here and I am using two scoops of the pancake sauce or the batter right into the pan. And all I'm going to do is just smooth it out until it makes a round shape inside your pan. Also, I am using a smaller skillet, if you can tell. It's kind of hard to tell with this, huh? But if you use anything between a 6 and 8 inch skillet, then I feel like it helps make the whole entire process a little bit easier because it's easier to flip as well as the batter getting crispier. Again, I am cooking this on a high heat, medium to medium high heat. You know what? Check your stove because, you know, all temperature ranges are a little bit different. But you see the edges are a little bit crispy. And I'm going to let this sit here and continue cooking for three whole minutes on one side. And then I will flip it and we're going to cook it again for another three minutes on the other side. Not adding any more oil or anything else to this. And all we have to do is just let it sit here, press on it to make sure that you're getting all the batter cooked. If anything comes out, then you know it's still kind of soggy and you might have flipped it a little bit too early. But it should be fine and this should be how it looks the entire time. A reminder that because we are cooking it for three minutes on each side without flipping it, this also helps with the whole crispy thing that I was talking about before because it's a personalized size. It's going to help keep it crispy and not soggy in the middle. And that's what you want. So go ahead and serve this immediately if you want to, if people can't wait in your household. Otherwise, continue doing the exact same thing, making sure that your pan is super hot each time before you put your batter on top of it because otherwise it's going to mess up the whole cooking time of it. So when you remove it off the skillet, your pan is going to cool down. 
So you just want to make sure you give it a minute to make sure it gets really hot before you add your oil and then your batter right on top and repeating the process until you've used your entire batter mix, which I believe made about four of these for me. Now go ahead and cut these up however you would like if you want to or just rip them apart with your chopsticks. Add some green onions to make it pretty if you'd like to as well. As for the sauce, I've made that sauce before in that chicken pancake recipe so I will go ahead and link that somewhere down below. And if you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.